So in this session, I'll be discussing about flow charts. So if I go to Google and I type here flow chart programming or let's say flow charts in programming, what kind of image we are getting? Let us see. So this kind of images we are getting. This is one image. This is one image. This is one image. What is happening? Oh, forget about the arrows and all. What kind of things you can see in the image? Some shapes, isn't it? So shapes are important. Actually, I want to show you the shapes today. Nothing else. Okay. Hey, sorry. So these shapes are telling something. Different shapes will have different meanings. Okay. Huh. Now we will see what kind of different shapes we have here. So in this example, what kind of shapes we are having? We have something called oval shape like an oval shape at the start and, and the end also start and stop can you see in all photos the start and stop are something like oval some something like rounded it may not be oval it may be rounded right start and stop are like that is it happening in all cases start and stop are oval yes yeah let us go to some other this one is the start and stop are oval start and end they are writing so that is our oval okay so that is one shape so let us uh, put it on paper otherwise we will forget so what i will do is i'll create an oval like this right this can be start or stop sorry Start or stop. Mm. Oval is used for starting or stopping. Okay, fine. Next, what kind of shape we have? We have what is this? Parallelogram. We have a parallelogram. Where it is used? It is used in only one place or what? See, the st the oval was used only for start or what? end also start also stop also in the same way what is this parallelogram used is it used in one place or different kind of scenarios what are those different scenarios first first one is input okay then and a display also input as well as display display means what output right to so print something how do we display something we print and input how do we do we use the input function okay so that I don't want to confuse now. But if I want to take some input from the user, I use input. If I want to print something, I use print. Right. So it may be input or output. For both of them, I use a parallelogram. Right. So let me have a parallelogram here. How do I create it? Ah. Okay. So this is the parallelogram, right? This parallelogram, it is used for input or output. So for both input and output, I'll be using a parallelogram. Okay. Now let's see what more shapes we have. What more shapes we have? What more shapes are you able to see? We have a rectangular shape as well. See this? We have a rectangular shape as well, right? Here also we are having a rectangular shape apart from parallelogram. So that one is used for statement. Any statement. We have x equal to 10. That is a statement. Right? Ah. So now we have another rectangle. This is a statement. Not the print statement. If it is print statement, then what I will use? Parallelogram because it is output. Right? So this is a normal statement. It can be uh, uh, assigning some value or maybe something else. Okay. This is a statement now. Okay. Next. Next what I have? We have a rhombus shape. That is the only shape left. Any more shape is there? Okay. That they are using but it is not actually there in all the flow charts. Can we see anything more? Only rhombus is left, right? 
only rhombus right see this only rhombus yeah so we have a rhombus now this a rhombus is used for something called condition is used for condition checking okay we need to check some condition condition what is condition what is a condition do you remember the code i wrote here what did i say if this y is minus negative value then i will not do this part i will directly print the x if the y value is positive 20 then i will do these two lines do you remember if this value is negative value i will not do these two lines if this value is positive value then i will do these two lines are you getting if y value is positive i will do these two lines but will i do this line no i will not do this line at that time if y is positive if y is positive only it will end here it will not go to line number five but if y is negative i will skip three and four and i'll go to five then our code will be line number one line number two and line number five it will not go to three and four yes yes so who will check then who will check let's say this is the case then ah uh, this then we have to add no that is a condition so this same code will be written the same code will have a condition here i have to after taking the value of y i have to check what is the value of y if y is positive then do these two lines if y is negative then do only this line are you getting it ah uh, so that is the thing so we will have something here and we will have something here at these two points we need some extra code okay ah uh, those kind of code will be there so those code are known as conditions there we have to check how do you check a number is positive if it is greater than zero if y is greater than zero then do these two things right ha huh. so that thing is known as condition so using these four shapes i think we will be able to do all our coding okay ha huh. this is our main agenda so now we will try to just do a small thing we'll try to uh, see a small program and we'll not write any code first we will draw the picture using these because what these people are doing in google in images they are are they writing the code no they are just drawing the picture using these shapes so we'll also try to make this picture after making this picture only we will write the code other directly we will not write the code okay once we are okay with this explanation then after five days four days we'll start writing directly code now we will not write direct code first for every program i will create the picture then we will write the code okay ha huh. now hope i hope you remember this oval is for starting and stopping this is for input output this is for statement this is for condition okay now now let us take a small example what i will do is i will go to our website okay we have a lot of assignments there in that list of assignments i'll try to solve a very basic question uh <clears throat> Print the sum of 12 and 23 using the addition operator. Okay. So how do I do? How do I do that? First, what should be there when the program is to be started? What do we need? Which shape do I need before start? We need the oval okay so i'll take a oval first i'll take one oval here and i will write here start okay start is written then next what do i do what is the first step i have to do to they are saying add two numbers that is 12 and 23 
print the sum of 12 and 23 using the addition operator. So where this 12 will be stored? In some variable. So it is like x equal to 12. x equal to 12. Right? So that is a statement. Is it a statement? So statement where do we write? In rectangle. Yes, correct. So I'll write a, put a rectangle here. What I will write here? x is equal to 12 right and i have to so i have to put an arrow here okay so i'll put a small arrow here like this okay done okay next after taking x equal to 12 what do i need to take another rectangle inside the rectangle y equal to 23 right so i'll take one more statement shape where i will write y equal to 23 and i will join the line because it has to go to this step after x equal to 12. okay next next what i need to do Print the sum of 12 and 23 using the addition operator. So what do I do next? In the parallelogram, what why, first, uh, why, why do we need the parallelogram? Sorry, why do I? Uh, rhombus is for condition checking. Is there any condition? Are we checking if x is greater than 23, if y is 23? No. Uh, so what is the next thing I have to do? What is the parallelogram doing? Input and output. So what is our next step? We want to we want to print. That means the output. So for output, what do I need? Parallelogram. So I'll put a parallelogram like this. Okay, parallelogram is done. Now I'll connect this. What do I write inside a parallelogram? Sorry? What, what, what is x plus y? So if it is z equal to x plus y, that is a statement, no? Why am I using the parallelogram? Yes, so to get the output, we need a print statement. So that print will be put in, in a parallelogram. So what do I print? Print what? X plus Y. Right? Will it print the output? Why? It will print the output. Print X plus Y. Is our code over? Ah, well, yes, that's what I'm asking. Uh, up to this point, code is over. Ah, so when the code is over, what do we need? Oval. And what we'll write in that oval? Stop. Okay. I put a uh, arrow here. And our code is over. Okay. So this is the flow chart for that. Now, once we get the flow chart, we can write the code. So, what is the first step? Start. So, start I will not write in the code, right? So, first we are writing x is equal to 12, then y equal to 23, then print x plus y. Over. Totally basic. And this is very, very simple that we have already done so many times. 12 plus 23 is giving me 35. Done. Okay. Now let us go to another complex one now. What they are saying? Write a program to check. Okay. Let us now check. Write a program to check a number is divisible by 7 or not. Okay. Let us, can we say a more simple one? Let me write a question here. I'll write a very basic question. Question is, write a program to check whether a given number 
is greater than 10 or not is the question clear write a program to check if a given number is greater than 10 or not okay that given number we can take in a variable also or you can take from the user as input also right okay so let us take the number as a user so if if i take it as x equal to 10 then i will use a rectangle if i take it from the user i will use if i take it as input from the user i will use parallelogram right so it is your wish if you take it in a variable you can take it if you want to take it as a input from user you can take it as input okay fine so how our code will work now how it will look like now first oh well where we will start if i'm starting here okay next step what is the next step do i have the number no we don't have the number so we have to take the number where we from how how we will take the number rectangle if you use rectangle what do i write inside the rectangle some number okay if, if i don't want to use rectangle so when we are when do i use rectangle what kind of statement x equal to 10 so i told you we have two possibilities what are the two possibilities either i can write x equal to 10 or else i have to take input from the user okay so it is your wish if you want to use uh this shape or this shape okay your wish if it you use this it will be input okay let us now go with a rectangle only so what will happen here here i take x is equal to 45 okay and i connect it like this okay next next what is to be done number is re ready now what is to be done tell logically don't say shape what i need to do i will eat i will sleep i will do what you say that we have to check so this is the thing we need check whether greater than 10 or not we have to use the comparison operator here okay so at this point i will use a rhombus for checking because that is a condition checking so we'll use a condition here what i will write here what is the condition what is the given number how 45 45 is stored where ah so x x greater than 10 this is the condition x is equal to x greater than 10 okay x greater than 10 so the line will be something like this it will come from here to here okay now now what are the possibilities we have with x greater than 10 either it can be greater or it may not be greater isn't it if i change the x value it may not be greater isn't it so i am asking x greater than 10 what are the two possibilities yes or no right so i'll have two possibilities here so i will put two lines here this is one line for true this is one line for false so let's say this is for true so i'll put something like this true and here i'll put false see here see here <coughs> So true or false two possibilities are there either it can be true or it can be false if it is true then what do i do if it is true then what do i do what do i do again you are directly going to shape what i should do inside the shape see whenever you are saying when i am starting you should not say circle or oval you should say start then we will think about the shape the next statement should be x equal to 45 then we'll think about this shape then we'll say that we have to check uh, check means rhombus then i will say rhombus what you are doing you are saying the shape first then you are saying start okay 
we are doing in reverse okay so what i should do if it is true then what i should do i should i should ah, if it is true then what do i do no, nothing to do now now from now onwards how then how i will come to know that uh, it is uh, true or false how after running the code i some i need some output no again you are saying the same you are not saying what we have to do we have to get per output as true that means either yes or no right ha huh. so yes or no is again a output statement so output statement which shape do i need parallelogram okay so i'll put a parallelogram here like this okay so here what do i write yes. how yes yes is a output statement for output what do we use true. only true if i write here only true will it give me output i have x equal to 10 and if i write here only 10 will i get the output then how do i get the output here ah then why are you not saying that we have to write here print what print what how x greater than 10 is already done print what print either true or else print yes it is greater than 10 what we are checking we are checking whether the greater the given number is greater than 10 or not if it is greater than 10 yes it is greater than 10 otherwise no it is not greater than 10 okay so at this point false what i have to do when it is false another parallelogram print no okay so after so will these two things happen both only one of them will happen right only one of them will happen okay after doing this what do i need to do done then what would stop we need to stop it now so at this point what i will do is i'll put an over like this and i'll write stop here and what i'll do you know i'll put two arrows from these two boxes is it okay right this is our code for checking a number is greater than 10 or not we start we take a statement x equal to 45 and then we check it is greater than 10 or not and if it is true we print yes and stop it if it is false then also we print no and stop it that's it okay this is how we should understand our coding problems okay if we know this now we can write the code so i'll write the code but uh, i will not explain what is happening there in detail today tomorrow we'll see that so what is the first step x equal to 45 x equal to 45 then what is the next step condition checking so use condition checking using if statements okay if x what what is the condition okay if x greater than 10 if x is greater than 10 what do i do if it is true print yes okay print Printers. yes okay if it is false then what do i do print no print no so here we have something called else which is used for the when the condition is false so i will write here print no over right now let us check i will write i've saved the code and i'll run it now what is it saying yes if i put here 10 is x greater than 10 10 greater than 10 is false so i'll get here no in the answer what about 5 if 5 greater than 10 no it is false I'll get no. 
okay that's it but i will explain all the if else and whatever control statements we have in the next class we have a lot of control statement okay in if else also there are some variations we'll understand everything in the next class okay that's it that's it for this session and see you in the next class so what i will do is here we have all these uh, if else assignments so many questions are there what i'll try to do is i'll not write the code today i'll not write any kind of code first am i able to understand the flow of the question or not if i'm able to understand then i can start with uh, coding okay so let us see because before if else also we need to know a lot of things okay ah, because how to write the conditions we know there is a condition one rhombus is there right that rhombus inside that rhombus what do i write it is not like i can write anything it is not like that i have to write whatever is to be written only that okay now now see uh i want to talk about a topic today that is called as we already know the expressions we have seen expressions what kind of expressions we have seen we have seen something like this x equal to 10. now here where is the expression 10 is the expression this whole thing is a statement and 10 is the expression now this expression what kind of expression it is it is arithmetic or numeric or integer expression it is a it is an integer expression when i write uh, y is equal to 7.5 now this 7.5 is a float expression right the same way d is equal to hello is what kind of expression string expression in the same way i can have something like this uh sorry mm. what kind of expression is this boolean expression right okay now see this 10 is a uh, numeric expression that is an integer expression can i write something like this x1 is equal to 5 plus 6 is this 5 plus 6 an expression or not yes 5 plus 6 is also an expression what kind of expression it is arithmetic but what will happen after i do this calculation 11 what is 11 so again 5 plus 6 is also an integer expression in the same way if i write something like this y1 equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 so what kind of expression this is float expression because 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 will ultimately give me some value which is 0 0.3 right did we discuss about type casting properly type casting was discussed right so uh, i was getting something like this let me take x2 x2 is equal to 3 plus true what do i get 3 plus true means what what is the value 3 plus 2 x2 what will have what will the x2 have 3 plus 2 what will happen in type casting true will be converted to 1 so 3 plus 1 is 4 so 4 is a what kind of expression integer expression so 3 plus true is actually a an integer expression not other kind uh, uh, boolean or something okay uh. so this way see this single value can be an expression we can have operators also in the values but ultimately what matters is the resultant value 6 plus 5 is 11 11 is the thing that i need to worry about 11 is the integer 3 plus 2 he 3 is an integer true is a boolean but what will happen when i add an integer and a boolean i will get a 4 3 plus 1 4 what is 4 4 is an integer so ultimately 3 plus 2 is actually an integer expression right okay in the same way 7.5 i am getting 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 ah, okay now let me have something like u is equal to 2 less than 3 so what is this comparing so what kind of value i will get how integer 2 less than 3 means what 2 less than 3 so it is a true 
2 less than 3 is true. So what kind of expression it is? Boolean expression. So this u is a Boolean expression, right? Huh. So I want to discuss about Boolean expressions today, actually. So what kind of Boolean expressions I can have? Most basic is this one. This is a Boolean expression. Is this a Boolean expression? What about this one? Boolean expression or not? Yes or no? Yes, it is also a Boolean expression. What about if I write like this? That is not a Boolean expression. Okay. But what happens is we have seen typecasting. In typecasting, what we have seen is we can convert one data type into another. Right? What is the first value data type? What is the data type of this? Boolean. Do I need to convert it to Boolean? It is already Boolean, right? So I don't need to convert it to Boolean. What about second value? Boolean. Right? This again, I don't need to convert. What is the data type of this one? 2 greater than 7 will give us Boolean. So again, this is already Boolean value. What about this one? Integer. So I can convert it into Boolean, right? How do I do that? I can use this bool bool of 2 so what do i get print o py 1 dot py so what did i get true 2 is giving me true what about minus 2 why false only 0 is false except 0 everything is true what about bool of 0 false what about minus 78.99? True. What about a string? Like this. This is also true. We have seen this already. What about empty string? False. What about a space? True okay space is also having some value so this way some of the values which are not boolean expression can be converted to boolean expression okay ha huh. so this concept is very much necessary to understand if else in if else it is not always like i'll be using only condition like 2 less than 6 5 less than 4 3 greater than 1 not like that it will always be not like that Sometimes we will have some non-Boolean values. See here. This is a non-Boolean value. These are Boolean values. When there are Boolean values, we don't need to worry about it. When there are non-Boolean values, we have to convert it to Boolean. Then I have to think about it. Okay. So, Bool of 45 will give me true. Right. Ah. These kind of conditions may be there. So conditions, it is not mandatory that our conditions will be inside that ROM bus. It is not always like 5 less than 2. It may be only 5 also. If it is only 5, then it is true or false. True. Right? Ah. That is what we need to understand. Okay. Now we'll try to create those flowcharts for the particular. So I don't need the this window today, actually, VS code. I don't need any code. Okay. We'll try to do all these things. Ah, again, some things are left before going to that. So how write a program to check a number is divisible by seven or not. So how do I know a number is divisible by seven or not? Please tell me. Online people, please try to get involved in what I'm asking. Alekya and Vishal, I'm asking that. How do I know? According to this question, they're telling me to check whether a number is divisible by seven or not how do i know forget about coding i don't want any answer regarding coding i want in maths how do you decide a number is divisible by seven or not a number is divisible by two or not a number is divisible by five or not a common answer i, do, I don't say something like that uh, well, see in school what we learned is we have divisibility test for two three four right but i don't want all those things to divide to to be divisible by three i have to add all the digits 
and then if the number is divisible by three then it is divisible by three no i don't want that if uh, th there are la at the end we have two zeros then it is divisible by four no no i don't want all those things i want a common answer how do i know a number is divisible by another number or not is seven divisible by two no is six divisible by two is uh, five divisible by two so how are you saying why are you saying yes or no that answer i want how do you say yes or no 35 is divisible by 3 or not no how do i know that sorry multiples Say clearly, I am not able to hear you. Say, <clears throat> we have to bring out the answer. How do I know? A number is a number X is divisible by Y. How do I know that? I have 30, uh, 49 and I have eight can i is a uh, 49 divide can uh, is uh, 49 divisible by seven yes why hmm okay what about 50 why 50 doesn't come in seven table okay so who decides what will come on the table and what will not come on the table why something is coming in the table? Why something is not coming in the table? Multiplying it by whom? Okay. Then? Hmm. So whatever answers are there, only those numbers we are getting. We can divide. Other numbers we cannot divide. Okay. So that is one answer. Anyone else? Can anyone tell me? Alekya and Vishal. Remainder zero is there are the divisible also, sir. If not divisible over not coming. Again, you are to talking about logic. That's what I said. I don't want logic here. I know this is the logic I have to write, but I am not talking about logic. I'm I'm not talking about what it is called coding. before going into this we have to take ah uh, so the thing is you have to say this word remainder not this i don't care about the coding today coding we will do tomorrow okay so today we will not talk anything about coding we have to decide this so once we know this logic only then i can talk about this what is this we will see later on okay so first we have to decide here that Whenever I am di dividing a number by any number, let's say I am having 49. When I am divided by 7, 7, 7, 49. Right? What is the remainder I am getting? That means what? 49 is divisible by? Okay. Then let us take another number. 48. Divide by 7. What will be 7 into? How 7 into 7? Okay. 7 into 6. How much? 42. 42. Then 6 is the remainder. Am I getting the remainder as 0? No. That means 48 is not divisible by 7. Okay. Then what about other numbers? 32 by 3. 3 1 3. 2 is the remainder. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Not like this. I'll directly put 10. Okay. Then 30. And then remainder is 2. So what will happen? 
so 32 is not divisible by 3 so this remainder will always help us not the table we will not never think about the table we will never think about divisibility anything we will always check the remainder remainder will tell us whether it is divisible by the other number or not okay so how do i check the remainder for remainder checking what kind of do we have any operators yes so okay fine let us not go into coding let us see tomorrow we will see everything about coding so this is the thing i have to do in flow chart so here i will draw a flow chart where i will be doing that okay so first thing write a program to check a number is divisible by seven or not okay so how do i start how do i start hmm, say okay this thing i'll take and i will write start here okay next next what i should do statement in the statement what i will write ha huh. so if i take user input i have to use parallelogram okay if i directly take x equal to some number i can use a rectangle so what do you want to use rectangle or parallelogram okay you want to take it from the user right so i'll take a parallelogram like this oh, sorry okay so here i'll write enter a number and uh, we will store that number in okay enter a number let's say x okay we will store it in x okay and then so this line should be actually written like uh, enter a number x okay fine no problem uh, in coding we will write x equal to input of something right uh, next after taking the number what i have to do okay rhombus what i will do in the rhombus this rhombus is used for what condition, condition. Okay. What I will check. forget about coding what i will check the number is with me question is the given number is divisible by seven or not so according to the logic what we have discussed today what we will check if the remainder is zero or not when we divide x by whom seven okay so i have to write here is the remainder zero when we divide x by 7 this is the condition we have to check right ah question mark we need a question mark am i asking i'm asking is the remainder zero it answer will be what yes or no okay yes. so we have two possibilities so let me put the arrow marks now So now there are two possibilities. This is one possibility. This is one possibility. Okay. Both will go to two different places. Okay. Now tell me what other things will happen here. So if it is yes, what do I do? So, okay. I forgot to write the yes. So there are two possibilities. Yes. And what? No. Ah, now tell me if it is yes, what do I do? True. it is divisible then how do i what do i show where what do i do tell me how do how will i show this code whatever code i will write how other person will come to know it is divisible or not to print it so printing for printing what do we need How rectangle for input output we said 
we need parallelogram so i'll put a parallelogram here okay so what do i write here we will print something right yes it is divisible right okay if not then another parallelogram here what i will write so no it is not divisible this is what i have to print right after printing what do i do uh, after printing so if it is yes it will say yes it will if it is no it will print no then after that stop it okay so now the code execution is over we got the output once we get the output we need to stop it right so i'll write here stop okay so i put the lines here so both the things will come to this point right ah. now how to write this code we'll see tomorrow okay next what is this question okay what is the meaning of factor sorry factor of 84 so tell me factor of 6 factor of 6 2 3, two, three. Ah. ah so what you are saying you are saying divisible by 84 Yes, tell me, tell me an example. So, see, uh, see, when I'm saying, give me an example of addition. What I will say, take a number x equal to 10, take a number y equal to 20, and then take, uh, then, then some, uh, add the two numbers, 10 plus 20 is 30. I'm explaining the whole process, right? So clearly, I, am I missing something? No, I'm taking all variables, I'm taking all values, I'm adding it. In the same way, you have to explain this question where you don't need to tell me the code. You have to tell me what is the meaning of factor. I'm not even asking the question. What is the meaning of factor? You have to tell clearly which number will be a factor of which number. In in the addition process, when I explained, I said three values, right? X, Y, and the sum. In the same way, you tell me clearly what is the meaning of factor. Forget about this question. What is the meaning of factor? When I say what is the meaning of factor, you have to give me an example that this number is a factor of that because of this reason uh, you have to say like that sorry say clearly don't say in one line say one paragraph hmm. two okay i took a number two then i'm forget about 84 i'm asking what is factor what is the meaning of factor i'm not i'm telling you again and again don't see this question there is no 84 in this whole world i want to give you you to give me an example what is the meaning of factor okay when i say what is the meaning of divisible by seven what is the meaning of divisible by seven i will take a number i will divide it by seven if i get the remainder as zero i will say that it is a number which is divisible by seven right did i explain the whole process yes in the same way you tell me what is the meaning of factor take a random, number. A random number okay tell me a number uh, ten. 10 okay i took a number 10 okay fine i will take a number 10 right okay i took a 10 then what do i do okay take say any other number without saying the other number i cannot do anything okay whom by whom okay i will now divide 10 by 5 now 
okay five into to ten remainder is coming zero okay so who is effect again you are saying it 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 we cannot say it 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 in everything we have to say specifically which five is a five is a factor of ten so here what i'm what according to you you have said that five is a factor of ten right okay in the same way now we have to go there what is the question asked factor of 84 means what Again, if you say you are saying if you divide a number by 84, what is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is if you divide a number by 84, you are saying that. Ah, that's why I am saying don't say it it. If you say it, we don't know which number. If you say clearly, only then I will come to know where you are doing the mistake. So what we have to say? If we divide 84 by a number don't say with if we divide 84 don't say random number tell me a number okay if you divide 84 by a 2 then then if the remainder is 0 then we can say that 2 is a factor of 84 hmm? okay so how is it uh, different from the previous example that divide by seven example how is it di different from that how is it different from this question question see the question what was given in the question and where are we writing it what is given in the question and where are we writing it now tell me what is the difference in the previous question and this question what is the difference previous question we are dividing number with seven in this question we are dividing 84 with another number okay so in the previous question we were dividing a random number by seven but here what is happening we are dividing 84 by a random number right ah so now tell me what will be the flow so i'll remove all these things now what what will come first okay i'll start it okay next parallelogram okay what do i write here okay enter a number x then rhombus what do i write here one second mm. what do i write here when when ah if the remainder is zero when ah look don't look at me answer is there na? Ah. so what we have to check here is the remainder zero when we divide 84 by x right this is the question okay so here how many possibilities are there yes, yes or no two possibilities right so let me have two possibilities mm. so the possibilities are yes and no so if it is yes what do i do So we have to print it right what do i print yes it is a factor of 84 
if it is no no it is not a factor of 84 correct okay then stop it right okay fine next write a program to check a number is a factor of 96 or not but actually this is a typing mistake this 4 is not there okay write a program to check a number is factor of 96 or not and if the given number is gray more than 96 program should say not a valid input what is to be done here the whole question is two lines what should be the first step so this is a question for all of you all three of you how what will be the first step what will be the second step what will be the third step speak because the chat is not visible to me try to speak what should be done i'm not asking about the coding right i'm just asking about what we have to do in this case and why this type of question is given factor of 96 or not that we already know okay hmm. so now first we have to understand what are the factors of a given number let's say i have a 12 okay so 12 what are the factors of 12 start from beginning okay one two Three, four, six, twelve. Is it anything more? No. Okay, let us take another number. Tell another number. Don't take a very big number. Twenty-five. What are the factors of twenty-five? Okay. Okay. Hmm? Twenty-five. Okay. Next. 21 okay then we have 36 why not 9 After 9? After 9, what is there? What comes after 9? Is 10 a factor? After that? Is 11 a factor? After 11? Is 12 a factor? Three, what is 3 into 12? 36. So 12 is a factor? Okay. Then after 12? 13. 13. How 13? 13 is not a factor of 36. 18. Anything more? How? You are saying after 18 there is no factor. Then? 36 so these are the factors of 36 okay now what have you observed from here what can you say what is the smallest number that can be a factor of a number one what is the greatest number that can be a factor of a number 
the number itself right what is the greatest factor of 12 is 12 what is the greatest factor of 25 what is the greatest factor of 21 what is the greatest factor of 36 so now can 37 be a factor of 36 no 37 is greater than 36 that's why 37 cannot be a factor of 36 right the same thing is asked in the question we have to find out whether a number is a factor of 96 or not and if the given number is more than 96 if the number is greater than 96 can it be a factor of 96 no that's why we have to say that not a valid input okay if the number is not greater than 96 only then we will check it is factor or not okay ah now tell me what is to be done first step first step we will find a factor okay okay so let me do this whatever you will say i will do and then we'll decide whether it is correct or wrong okay what first i will start it okay oh well i put it here start mm, now next tell me what is to be done say i have a start here and after that what is to be done okay parallelogram we have to take the values isn't it okay enter a number x hmm. next rhombus okay what we will check in the rhombus what will i check okay is the remainder zero when i divide divide what 96 by x okay so this thing i need to okay so here i put a question mark okay so what are the possibilities okay yes and no sorry uh. yes and no no If it is yes, so I'll print it. Okay, two parallelograms are there. Either print yes or no. But what about the thing what was asked in the question? If the number is greater than 96, say that it is not a valid input. So I will I will use this code only, okay? Whatever flow chart we have taken, I'll try to I'll try to check now. So there it is, top and uh, lines. Where is the code? You didn't tell me, no? you had to tell me but you didn't tell me anything you said only this much so i'll now check with the code <clears throat> you should have told me that part but you didn't tell me now i will do is enter a number x so i will take x equal to 100 x equal to 100 okay i took x equal to 100 now what will happen is the remainder zero when i divide 96 by x when i divide 96 by 100 do i get remainder zero 96 by 100 what is happening let us see okay here only we'll see 96 by 100 what will happen 100 to 0 0 remainder is 96 okay 
what is asked here is the remainder zero is the remainder zero no if it is no it will say it will print no in the output and code is over but what was the question the question was if the number is greater than 96 then you should print not a valid input so will this flow chart work no then what change is to be made here please online people i want some help from you alekia and vishal please tell me where is the problem and how do we solve this problem where where i will add because this rhombus will always give me only two possibilities yes and no rhombus will never give me more than one possibility where yeah, we will take another condition entering. while entering the number okay let us go back to that place hmm. this is okay this rom box okay now what do i write here What kind of condition you want to check? Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry. Say, say, say. Because they are not saying. If you don't say, no one will say. Online people, they are staying silent. They are not saying anything. You say. Say whatever you say, I will write. Again, we will come back. No problem. Even if the whole class goes in one question, there is no problem. What you say? Previous example you said, na, I wrote everything and then it was wrong. Again, we are coming back. Na? Now also you say, no problem. Then we'll decide. If it is wrong, we'll come back. If the given number, if the given number means which number? X. If x is okay, is x greater than greater than what? 96. Question is there. It is a question is x greater than 96 so what are the possibilities yes. yes or no okay let me put the lines okay so there are two possibilities yeah let's say this is no this one is yes. Okay. We can write anywhere. Ah. So I'll put this as. Okay. Okay. Sorry. This is yes. This is no. Ah. Now tell me what is to be done. Is x greater than 96? Yes or no? So if it is greater than 96, what do I do? Ah, yes. Then what do I do? If it is greater than 96, if the answer is yes, then what do I do? Mm -hmm. What is the question? Read the question properly. Mm -hmm. So, not a valid input. What we should do? We have to print it. So, if the answer is yes, now we have to print it, right? Okay. So, I will draw a line here and i will print something to print something what do i need parallelogram okay so what do i print here so not a valid input correct okay now tell me what is to be done when it is no is x greater than 96 the answer is no no x is not greater than 96 then what i will do what condition will check there how, how do i know is fact x is a factor of 96 or not okay so now we need another which shape okay so need we need another rhombus here mm. so if the answer is no 
then we have to do something like this so is the remainder zero when I divide 96 by X right is the remainder 0 when I divide 96 by X so what are the possibilities yes, yes or no So there are two possibilities yes and no next next what is to be done if it is yes then what do I say now ah, it is a factor of 96 what do I do with that print Yes, it is a factor of 96, right? If it is no, then what do I do? No, it is. It is not a factor of 96. So parallelogram. No, it is not a factor of 96. Then, then what do I do? What about this point when it was not a valid input was printed? After that, what is to be done? Stop it. What about after this step? After this step? So all these three points will come to one stop, right? So what I can do? I can take one stop here and I can point all the three things to this, right? So this will also come here, this will also come here and this one will also come here, right? Okay, now we don't know whether this code is correct or not. Let us now check with different, different numbers. So what are the numbers we will check? Tell me some numbers which we will take. check. First, we will take 2. Then we will take 5. Then we'll take a 96. Then we'll take a 97. Then we'll take 34. Then we'll take uh, 3. Then we'll take, uh, it is 96, right? 32. Then we'll take 100. Okay. We'll check for all these numbers. First, what is the number? So 2 will go to where? To uh, start from beginning. Where are the 2 is what in this whole code? X. So X is 2. So what is the next step? Is X greater than 96? Is 2 greater than 96? No, so it will come to this step. What will happen here? Is the remainder 0 when I divide 96 by 2? 96 by x means 96 by 2. What is the remainder? Is the remainder 0? Yes. Yeah, so it is a factor of 96. Gone. What about 5? Is 5 greater than 96? No. Again, I will come here. Is the remainder 0 when I divide 96 by 5? Remainder is 0 or not? No. It will go to? No, it is not a factor of 96 and stop. What about this 96 is 96 greater than 96 no so it will come here is the remainder 0 when i divide 96 by 96 yes so it is a factor of 96 it will stop then what about 97 is 97 greater than 96 yes so where it will go not a valid input and it will stop okay 34 is 34 greater than 96 no so it will come to is the remainder 0 when i divide 96 by 34 96 by 34. 
no it is not a remainder is not zero so it will not a factor of 96 after 34 3 is 3 greater than 96 no so it will come to here is the remainder is the remainder zero when i divide 96 by 3 yes so it is a factor of 96 printed gone 32 is 32 greater than 96 no so it will come to here. is the remainder zero when i divide 96 by 32 96 by 32 yes the remainder is zero so what will happen it is a factor of 96 stop then 100 is 100 greater than 96 yes so it is not a value input it will stop so all the numbers are passing the flow chart so now i think the flow chart is correct right the pre was the previous flow chart correct no the previous flow chart was missing a point what which point it was missing greater than part okay so this is what is called the building logic okay this way we have to analyze each problem and we have to draw the flow chart which condition checking will come first okay huh. so i'll end the class here but i want you guys to do a small problem which is based on this question okay so let me check whether that question is there or not uh, uh, uh. Check whether a number is negative, positive, or zero. Question number 25. Okay. So try to solve this on paper with pen and paper. So you will not write the code, you will just draw this flow chart. Right. Check whether a number is negative, positive, or zero. Okay. All of you try to solve that. That's it. That's it for this session. Okay. See you in the next class.